a strength day. So I, if you followed me on Instagram, you've known that I've been taking some time off. So this week is kind of the first week that I've been really getting back into it. And so today we're just gonna go through some strength movements. It's always interesting when you start to get back into it after taking you know, three, four, five weeks off from what you're used to doing, where your numbers are. My numbers are not gonna be where I left off and that's okay. I just wanna to start to get under some weight and start to feel good. I'm probably gonna be super sore tomorrow. I'm already really sore today, but it feels good. And my mind and my body are ready to get back into it. So today we are gonna start with some bench press, some banded bench press some flies and then we're gonna hit a lower body as well all right so you ready we are using the men's bar day I'm gonna bench as well so I kind of got the she got the short end of the stick um, I don't typically mind using a women's bar but for me it's probably just easier using what you're used to so I think for her it's probably a little bit bigger adjustment but this will be her last warm-up set then we're going to go into a five by five at a moderately heavy set just to kind of keep some loading on the bar. We're not going to push it too much, but just kind of starting getting back into some loading. spotting pat i made him put on an extra 10 pounds he's not very happy with me but he can definitely do it um, but the first thing you want to think about is when you unrack the bar making sure that you get it straight up overhead and that you take a big breath and you kind of want to activate your lats as well as your upper back by thinking about sliding everything down and back so we're kind of scrunching under setting our shoulders um, and then from there, you want to make sure you take a really big, deep breath. So it's kind of three points of contact, or not kind of, it is three points of contact. Your head is on, or your back is on the bench, your butt's on the bench, and your feet are on the floor. And you want to pull the shoulders underneath. Nice, big, big, deep breath to your chest, so then you can take the barbell straight down and right back up. So I haven't benched in a while. I'm only using 115. My best bench press ever is 200. So I'm not quite where I should be for a five by five, but again, just getting back into it. I've been doing a lot of push-ups and some body weight stuff, but feeling out a barbell again and just making sure that when I finish today, I wanna keep working hard and keep progressing and then I don't wake up and like, oh crap, I did way too much and then have to take some time off because of injury or just too much soreness where I can't move my arms or lift them over my head. So it's always better to work back into it slowly and not just crush yourself on day one. All right, so to kind of finish things off, we're gonna do some banded bench. Uh, we've put hooks on our floor specifically for this. We're gonna use them for some deadlifts here shortly as well. But you could totally use kettlebells or some heavy dumbbells as well. Um, and what this will do is it'll add less resistance at the bottom of your bench. And then the further you push, the more resistance you're gonna have. So it makes that top end harder as well as it encourages speed through the bench press as well. It's a great way to do like burnout sets. So we're just gonna flip these over the bar. Um, we'll have it at an angle so that when we pull it out of the rack, we should be vertical. So it's at a little bit of an angle right now. I'm gonna set this other one up as well. Chrissy might have no weight and I might have just a little bit on there. I'll try to get somewhere between like 12 and 15 reps on this. So ideally, you want your bands to be the same band tension so that when you're holding it, it doesn't feel like one side's pulling you more than the other. If your bands don't feel like the same tension when you loop them, you can twist them. So if one of them's looser, you can twist it a little bit to make it feel tighter and that will really help. The other thing is these should be fast. So I'm choosing to go with no weight on my barbell and just focus on keeping the bar moving and getting a nice good pump, worrying less about how much weight is actually on my bar today, but focusing on that explosive power. The weight was all done in the five by five. Now this is for just kind of that hypertrophy and that explosive power. First five feel like not so bad like you do a ton of them. The last five are really hard. Feels like there's a ton of weight on the bar and the bar and it starts moving super slow. It's a drastic difference from one to 15. Good job, you got it. Nice job. 
All right, so we are done with bend and I feel very pumped right now. The banded is really fun to end with because for me, I really struggle with my locking out whether, so it's that final little extension for my triceps, whether I'm overhead, using my chest, that's what tends to go first on me, handstand push-ups, things like that. So that banded bench and those last five reps when I'm at fatigue and I feel, can feel all the blood in my muscle, I can really feel that struggle right there. And so it's helping me work on that. And that's something I wanna work on for the next season. Now we're gonna go into a lower body pull. I like lower body work so much better than upper body. So we're gonna hit a deadlift, same thing, just a moderate weight for a five by five. Again, I'm not going off of my old numbers. I've taken a lot of time off. I haven't done any deadlifting. So I'll just go off a of feel today and I'll like to be around my 70 to 80% feel. Like that's the effort that I'm putting forth if I was working on a scale on one to 10. And then from there, we'll go into some banded deadlifts just for some speed and some power and some explosiveness. So if you have a workout buddy, so Pat is my workout buddy, he went much heavier on his five by five bench because he's been lifting and he's been doing more of the, the weights than I've been doing lately. So even though we weren't necessarily doing the same stimulus, for me it was just getting back under a bar, getting a little bit of weight on the bar, so my percentages were much lower than his. We just changed the plates and we could still work out together and still hit the same style of a workout and both get really good benefits out of it, but stuff that benefits us individually for our personal goals. So remember that just because maybe you aren't working towards the same goal as somebody, you guys can still train together and you can still get really great workouts in and have that camaraderie and that support from your accountability buddy. All right, so I started my working sets. Um, so we're around 225 right now. Um, Pat also has to keep me in check a little bit because it kind of feels good to where I want to put a little bit more on, but I also don't want to wake up super sore tomorrow just because I haven't been deadlifting. And the other thing is I don't want to get to the point where I feel like I need my belt. I want to make sure that I'm focusing on engaging my midline and supporting my back with my midline and focusing on the quality of my movement so I can start building good solid patterns and maybe even break some bad habits that I've had from seasons before. <laughs> So I'm not a great deadlifter, but something that I have seen that makes a big difference for me is just thinking about being more compact in the deadlift. So the wider my stance is with my feet means the wider my hands have to go, which means the lower I have to get to the bar. The more narrow I go, the taller I can be. The wider I go, the lower I've got to be to the bar. So when you can stay nice and compact, it allows your hips and your chest to be a little bit higher. And it's also even gonna shorten the range of motion you've got from the floor to overhead. And it makes that very first couple inches off the floor feel a whole lot better. I definitely agree with what Pat said, but I think it's also remember to kind of look at your dimensions and also the level that you're at. So when I deadlift, I actually pull my hips slightly lower because I like to feel my hamstrings activate in my glutes before I get ready to pull. I'm um, also lower to the ground and I have shorter legs. So I think it's gonna help me a little bit more in the deadlift and I do have longer arms. But the thing that I like to think about and that I really think helps people is on the deadlift when we stand tall, so when I stand up, when I get to the top, I'm squeezing my butt, bringing my hips to the bar. To lower back down, what a lot of people wanna do is let the bar come away from them. That's gonna pull us into a bad position and we don't wanna do that. So when we're lowering, the first thing that happens is our hinging, we're hinging by pushing our hips back, keeping the bar as close to our body as we can. Once we hit our knees, we can drop our hips slightly to help us get the bar to the floor and it should stay right over our shoelaces, almost like it's glued to our shins. Not quite because we don't wanna scrape our shins, but that allows us just to push through our hip or push through our feet, squeeze our butt and stand tall. So really just focus on the first movement once we hit the top of our deadlift, it's going to be hinging by gently pushing our hips back. But when we do that, we keep the bar glued to our body. All right, so we are gonna do a finisher today. We were gonna do banded, but we switched it because we wanna work on just that little hinging piece. So for you guys, this is something you could do at home or even use it to warm up your deadlift to work on your hinging position. So it's called a demo deadlift. And I'm gonna stand the bar all the way up to the top and I'm gonna focus on pushing my hips back, letting my shoulders come forward as my hands come down, just to about my kneecap. Once I hit that position, what I'm thinking about doing, pushing through the floor, squeezing my butt, bringing my hips to the bar, my shoulders over my hip, which is over my knee, which is over my heel. So it's just gonna be this small range of motion and we're gonna take out the piece of dropping the bar all the way to the floor. I'm gonna go for about a max set, somewhere around 20 reps probably, just to feel a really good burn, get a really good pump and I shouldn't be feeling this a ton in my lower back. It should be a lot of hamstring and glute and then I'm pulling my belly button towards my spine to support my back so I'm not feeling it there.
guys. So we're heading into winter. Normally that's a little bit more like bulking season, a little less conditioning, a little bit more lifting. So if you guys are looking for some more stuff like this, want to pick up a program, we've got an eight week, eight week strength program that's perfect for this. It's got a lot of stuff like the stuff we're doing today. So check that out in the link below if you guys want to follow along. Yeah, and stay with your fitness. Find a routine, stick to it, whatever it is. If you have a routine, stick with it. Um, holidays are coming, try to just find some balance. Uh, and don't forget about your workout. So that strength pro program is super awesome if you guys are looking for something. If you have no equipment, we have some abs programs. We've got a ton of other stuff on IBEX training. Make sure you guys check those out. It's a lot of what Patrick and I do, and we think it's a blast and we love it. Don't forget, smash the like button, check out the links in the bio, and have a great day. We look forward to seeing you again soon.